in the concept of the Future Army 2020. This is where the British Army aims to be by the year 2020 using this technique, these tactics, weapons, equipment and doctrine. Now, the British Army is the best in the world, as we all know, because it allows the junior commanders and even the senior private soldiers in order to think and act for themselves. The smallest unit that is effective against any enemy is the section. A section consists of eight men. You put three sections together, you get a platoon. Some of you older and bold, yes, you know that. If you're even older and bolder, go back to 1914, 18, we even had four sections to a platoon. And the sections were made up of ten men. A little bit of history. But for this, the British Army has been operating on three sections, make up two. And in each section, eight men. And if you look to your far left, those of you lucky enough to be on the bank, have a little bit more view over there. If you look to your extreme left, you'll see a section of men coming onto the arena now. This section is led by a lead scout. It is flexible as to where is the arrowhead formation. The arrowhead formation allows the commander to have full control of his section. He can see all his guys. A bit in arrowhead, the lead men, from him, they will, to the right, they will be angled to the rear. To the left, they will be angled to the rear. So they have frontal firepower, if necessary, and to the left and to the right, they will have firepower if they encounter any enemy. So 270 degrees to those working in old school. They have firepower 270 degrees. They have sight, they have cover, they're wrong. They have firepower, covering those arcs. What they're doing now is they're looking, sometimes through their sights, at times for magnification sights, look at the likely positions of the enemy. They're also looking for likely positions of cover, thinking ahead. If they come under fire, where am I going to use cover? Am I going to the rear? Am I going to the side? Am I going to the front? Thinking ahead at all times. That is each and every individual soldier's responsibility. It is muddy out there, ladies and gentlemen. You can have a go later on if you wish. I'll tell you that as a no. Now, at the moment, to give full frontal firepower, he's closed his arrowhead up almost to extended line, where they are almost left and right in one plane. So he knows he's got his left of arc, them trees, to his left flank, and yourselves to his right flank. Those observant amongst us along this row here, if you see on their right shoulder, a tiger. Does anybody know what that tiger is? Those of you with eyes as old as mine, you can see it on my right shoulder as well. decision to pull his troops out of the killing area in order 
to one, save his guys, and two, in order to launch the attack on the enemy. Note, when they move, Charlie moves, Delta gives covering fire. Then when Charlie is down, they will give covering fire in order to allow Delta to move to the rear. All the time, fire and manoeuvre. You cannot move without fire, you cannot fire without your uh, muckers moving. They will move to a baseline. A baseline, a chosen piece of cover in which they have already covered and seen before they got there. than the enemy is putting on him. Don't forget, with the two LMGs and light machine guns, he's got 80% of the sexist firepower. He is going to utilise that to pin the enemy down and suppress them. Now he's con contracted with the section 2 IC and he's made his plan. As I say, future army 2020, his plan could consist of left flanking, right flanking or up the front. However, we also have a fire support group, FSG, that could utilise mortars, artillery, south stair or AH, attack helicopter, as you know from the media in current operations out in the Middle East. What he's going to do, he's making his battle plan, and as the enemy have got a tight position up there, with a heavy machine gun, he's now going to call in the mortars, the fire support group mortars, the 81mm mortar. One zero, this is Gold 3 1 Charlie. Stand by, fire mission over. Gold 3 1 Charlie, fire mission, free mortars, grid 176540, bearing 4700 mils. Number two, just fire over. The Gold 1 0, fire mission, grid 176540, bearing 4700 mils. A shot 2 5, out. He's called in the mortars. The first mortar is slightly overshooting the area of the enemy position. A golf one, Charlie, a drop 100 over. Golf one zero, drop 100 out. He is now adjusting the mortar fire to bring it onto the target area. It looks like it's on target. Okay. Go through it, Charlie. 12 rounds. Fire for effect. Over. Fire for effect. Out. Okay, he's now got the mortar fire on target. He's now putting 12 rounds. Fire for effect. On the target of the enemy position. These mortars in a mortar platoon. Wrong. 81mm mortar platoon. They have three mortars. They normally fire in threes. Hence, when you see the mortars come in, whether it be media or whether it be here, they come in threes. <laughs> Additionally, the British Army current doctrine, we pull back from the area, not just to form a baseline, not just to get into hard cover, but also if we are going to use the fire support group, fast air attack helicopter, we need to put a bit of distance between the enemy and us. However, current doctrine has proved that this is quite well known. And insurgents are cotton on to this, and they will close up with the British Army, knowing that there could be fire support group coming in. However, in this case, it is successful. The commander now 
is making his battle plan. He has eliminated the heavy machine gun with use of the mortars. What he's now doing, he's assessed the plan and he's got one more enemy position that he can see and hear. As you can see, the enemy are rather ill-disciplined trying to keep their heads down whilst they're firing. Unaimed shots. Non-effective fire. Effective fire is known as rounds landing at your feet or you're taking casualties. This is non-effective fire. So commander's making his battle plan. He's conflaving with the section 2 IC. So the advantage of this baseline, they are now in hard cover. Cover from view and cover from fire. Cover from fire is the most important. A bit like sitting in the cornfield, you might be covered from view. But as proved in especially the Battle for Hill 112 in 1944 in southern Normandy, a lot of the British Army were crossing the open fields, cornfields. The MT-42s of the German Army were literally siding through and the British were taking severe casualties. We soon learnt very quickly. That was cover from fire. They have now come out of cover from fire. The commander's now making his battle plan. It can be a double-edged weapon though. It can block your view of the enemy, but more importantly, it blocks the enemy's view of you. He can see something's going on, but he doesn't know what. It gives you the advantage. What he's done, the sex commander has left the fire fire team, Delta fire team, giving fire support. Undercover smoke, he has now pulled his men out. He is now going to do a right flanking. He's crawling into the position here. He's going to leave his point of fire, a light machine gunner, closer to the enemy under his direct command. He's now taken himself, leading the section, like all good leaders, and his grenadier, who was in fact the lead scout. This is his other task. Taking them forward, so they're now going to assault the position. A lot of films, a lot of old doctrine was lob the grenade. Unless you're good at cricket, British Army do doctrine now is you post the grenade. As per postie delivering your mail, these guys will post the grenade into the enemy position, ensuring that it is a success. But under cover of the supportive fire from Delta, that allows these guys, the commander and his grenadier, to go forwards because the suppressive fire from Delta keeps the enemy's head down. As you can see, it is working. If you can hear voices over in Delta, that is a Section 2 IC. He is taking over his Delta fire team and controlling the fire. Controlling the fire so everybody's not running out of ammunition. He's got to conserve ammunition. They only carry a certain amount. The more you carry, the more you're weighed down. It's a fine line, it's a balance between the correct amount of ammunition for the task in hand. There you see the grenade has gone in. The assault has gone in. The commander has led it. You've taken a position, he's got split forces. What he's going to have to do now is regroup his section. Regroup the guys so that one, they're under his full command. Two, they're in all round defence. They need protection. They don't know what else is out there. They've got different states of weapons, some low on ammunition, some okay. Might have casualties. He needs to assess this in a regrouped, secure position. Note, the 
The Delta fire team come through the proven safe route, the route that Charlie initially took. Again, one foot on the ground at all times, fire and manoeuvre. The Grenadier and the point of fire are, are able to give cover and fire if necessary, if anybody else opens up. That's when Delta fire team move in. Once Delta fire team move in, they can, they can be in a position in order to give cover and fire if necessary, and then he could move Charlie into a more secure. We have the advantage. He is now redeploying his men, not into a baseline, but putting Charlie in a fire support position in order to pin down the enemy. They will get their weapons up and suppressing the enemy with more weight of fire upon the enemy position. He's having a talk with his 2 IC. Made his battle plan. And he's going to do a left flanking. Why left? There is more cover on the left. He can get close to the enemy. Again, the same technique as used this on the right flank and in the first attack. The second attack, he will lead them round. Another big man. But on our left flank, same principle. He's got Charlie putting down suppressive fire. He's going to lead his point of fire round in order to give more fire. And then he's going to lead his grenadier in in order to post a grenade. Some of you might know from Afghanistan in particular, or anywhere in the Middle East, the temperature in summer is very hot, it's very dusty, and it has affected this weapon in the early days. We've now been operating for over 15 years on the SA-80A2, a very good, very robust weapon. So robust 